All right, we're back. It's another episode with Pratik. This time we're talking about applying flow metrics in the daily scrum. We should probably say the four flow metrics real quick as we get into this because people are probably like, what do you mean flow metrics? And uh, it's probably good to define your terms. And so the four flow metrics, cycle time, throughput, whip limits, and work item age or item aging, however you want to say it. Those are the four. Uh, what we're doing in this series with Pratik, we're first of all introducing Pratik to the Agile for Humans audience. He's going to be um, teaching a lot of courses and doing a lot of neat things with us. Uh, but secondly, we're trying to show, uh, since we have been on a push about story points and some other topics, how do you actually go forward and do probabilistic forecasting? And how do you use the flow metrics to your advantage, especially if we're saying not to use velocity? So, so if we're going to pull that out, we need to give you a solution to install. And so we're going to go event by event for a scrum team. And this time it's all about the daily scrum. So Pratik, if you want to tee up, or maybe we'll talk about the daily scrum real quick, and then you can tee up the flow mm -hmm. metric that would help. Right. And so, uh, Todd, keep me honest here. It's been a little while. No I'm kidding. We know this one pretty well. <laughs> daily scrum, right? 15 minute time boxed event that happens each and every day. The scrum team, typically the developers, uh, the developers get together and they figure out their collaboration for the day. They inspect their progress towards the sprint goal. They make adaptations on their sprint backlog. They figure out what can we do today to make some great progress towards our sprint goal and to make sure that we're still on track. Um, so it's a collaborative event. It's a discussion on how they're going to pair up, how they're going to work, if they're going to mob, if they're going to be solo, if they're going to help each other test, all sorts of discussions like that. At the end of 15 minutes, they have a plan for the day. They update their, their sprint backlog. Everyone buys in and they go about their day. So critique, if you think about that type of daily scrum and Todd, you as well, you're, you're an expert in this space as well. Which, if any, of the flow metrics do you think could assist a scrum team in hitting those objectives for the daily scrum? Yep. For me, it's, uh, it's work, work item age with an uh, assist provided by cycle time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So let's start with work item age. So can you define it? And then, and again, this is for both of you. Uh, can you define it and then help us understand how you would apply work item age to get the outcomes from that, from the daily scrum event that we're after? Maybe Todd, can you help us with work item age? Sure. Work item age. It's the elapsed time between when you started something and the current time. Yep. So from which you started and the current time, just a little bit of an FYI on this. It really is helpful in advance of using this, defining your starting and end points, <laughs> right? <laughs> Meaning it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've started work on something if it's in your sprint backlog. Now that might be the case for you. I wouldn't recommend that. I'd say that you should figure your starting point out at the time for which you actively start doing your the work on it. So work item age, elapsed time between uh, the, uh, uh, between when you started something and current time, it really is helpful to define when your starting point is and have a collective understanding of that as a scrum team, uh, really before you start to kind of like, even just like specifically say developers, developers need to know when their starting point is. I'll stop there. Pratik, I saw you laughing. Yeah. Well, well, I was, <laughs> it's so true though, trying, right? What I was trying to add, uh, I was thinking about as you were saying that was, those are literally the two data points you need for all flow metrics. Yeah. Start point, end point. That's it. You know, those two, you'll have all your flow metrics. So for a new scrum team that, that if they're like, hey, this is what we want to put, this is what we, how we want to work. Do you guys have any kind of recommendations for establishing start point and end point? Uh, in a scrum context, would it be um, when it's pulled into a sprint backlog and then when it hits the definition of done? Is that... Is that reasonable or would you think it would be something different? Or in progress to done, something like that? Or is it hard to say because it's so contextual? <laughs> See, it we, depends. If you stay, stay quiet, you'll get to the answer, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it is, it's, it's pretty contextual, but I, I, I am with Todd on, I would try not to include that passive sprint backlog area yeah. uh, in your in, in your as uh, within your start point because 
it's it's passive and you haven't really mm -hmm. the team hasn't really made an active pull transaction to pull yeah. to start work yet it, i don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with including it but as, as a starting point i probably wouldn't yeah and i think for me to paint a really clear picture of this for people that are working um it, it's it's allowed you can do it however you want you define how you want to do this but to me most common tools come with a to do doing and done scrum board to me i would start looking at work item age when something is actively pulled from to do to doing now we view to do doing as done as a really immature uh, definition of a workflow you can learn all this stuff without knowing kanban but it's really helpful for you to understand how to define and actively manage your workflow yep. take this as well uh, suited for your environment as possible. So to me, really simply, I would say, and this is my recommendation, that once it's moved to doing and that clock for work item age starts. So let's let's just put that in our head. We've pulled it to doing and now it's been sitting there. How's that help our daily scrums? Yeah. Yeah. Now, now we've moved this thing forward and we've started a clock. Okay. This thing's there. What, what, what does that even mean? Um, my guess is the team's getting together and having a daily scrum. So we're looking at this every day. And every day, based on the definition that Todd gave us earlier, uh, that work item age clock is ticking. Where we're, that every item that we've pulled in but not yet finished is aging. And that gives us information. That gives us information about this particular work item. If one item keeps aging a lot more than others while others getting keep getting done, well, we talked about risk in uh, in sprint planning earlier. <laughs> Daily Scrum, that is what shows us risk. The fact that this one work item is keeps increasing in age, that item has a lot of risk attached to it. What do we as a team do to come together and quote unquote de-risk this item? Mm -hmm. uh, what are, what as, as we said earlier, the point of the Daily Scrum, one of the points of the Daily Scrum is to devise our plan for the next day. Yep. Um, what is that plan? How are we going to de-risk that item? Now, Pratik, something that you mentioned also at the beginning uh, was an assist from cycle time. Mm -hmm. So uh, now when we bring in uh, some cycle time data, correct me if I'm wrong, that helps us with a service level expectation that can show us on an item aging chart if something's in the red zone, if something's in danger. Is that mm -hmm. right? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's uh, this, the, if, if any of you... On my other podcast, we ask people to do this. But if any of you are playing the drinking game at home, every time I say risk, <laughs> take, take a drink. They're um, already they already passed out. This is <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they didn't make it through the last video. <laughs> so cycle time, cycle time, and let's define cycle time first as well. Is sure. the amount of time it takes for items to go from that start to end point that Todd talked about. That mm -hmm. entire anything that gets done. Uh, not done, done, but past the past the past the finish point uh, has what's called a cycle time. How long it took for that thing to go from start to finish. If we have an idea of how long it has been taking things to finish those things that after they pass that start point, we have an idea of how much risk we have associated with each item. Uh, that service level expectation that you talked about, <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> that, that service level expectation is our expression of, we as a team believe that 85% of the time we get things done in five days or less, or 70% of the time we get things done in three days or less. Right. We put an expectation out there for our product owners, stakeholders, whoever it is, that this is what you should expect from us. And if an item is aging and it's getting closer and closer to that service level expectation, the risk of breaching that service level expectation is increasing on a, on a daily basis. That is what I meant initially by de-risking. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, this is, this is, um, this is a game changer for your daily scrum. I'm not going to lie. When, when you do this and you take this, remove the three questions. They were removed in the scrum guide in 2020, right? This is depth of conversation that you can get out of, out of your daily scrum. And so I say that because how many times we're optimists, right? I, I like to think most of us are optimists. So how many times is something um, bigger than we thought it was? More work than what we thought it was, harder than we thought it was. Something is impeded and we may not even know it's 
got an impediment or not, right? Or someone's off doing and working on something by themselves and the assumption is, well, they'll, they'll show, shoot a flare up when they need help, right? How many times have you all said, by the end of the day, I should have this one. <laughs> and then the next day, by, by the end of the day, I'll have this fixed. But by the end of the day, and stuff like that can go kind of unnoticed as we're in our day-to-day -day stuff. And it's not to say a blame game or anything like that. The, what we need is this is giving us signals to have conversations about stuff that's aging differently than what we thought it was going to age, right? This brings an unbelievable amount of depth to your daily scrum when used properly, right? This isn't to insult. This isn't for anything like that. This is for us to engage in newer and better conversations. And I think we're at a mage attached with attached, uh, attached with a service level expectation, which is a single item forecast, right? It's a single item forecast that comes along with a probability like we talked about in the last video. It's just, it's game changing. I, I Like try it, right? If you haven't done it yet, even just looking at work out of mage, try it tomorrow at your daily scrum. You'll, you'll find new and better conversations. Very good. All right, guys. I think the last thing that we'll talk about here is if you want to learn more about these concepts, right? So we are teaching um, some courses. And so flow metrics for scrum teams is definitely one that you're going to want to check out. Uh, we go through all of the scrum events. We go through the flow metrics. We talk about how scrum teams can leverage these flow metrics uh, for fun and profit. And of course, to, to help deliver better products. So that's, uh, it, it's something you're not going to want to miss. Uh, so definitely we'll uh, put a check this out. We'll put a link in the, the show notes so you can get there as well. Critique is also teaching uh, quite a bit uh, with us going forward. He'll be doing applying professional Kanban, uh, applying metrics for predictability and agile work slicing. So check out Pratik's uh, items as well. We'll have those linked up there. But uh, for this particular topic, flow metrics for scrum teams, a new class from ProKanban.org is uh, going to be, if this is interesting to you, this class is just going to blow your mind. So we hope you can join us and uh, check this out. Guys, anything you would add before we call it a video? I just wanted to comment, Pratik, your hair on that last one, like in that picture that we have in the overlays. Yeah. Something yeah. else, you gelled it up and everything. It's it's my, my wife likes to say I go between John Wick and Neo. So I'm always <laughs> Keanu Reeves. It's just a question of... <laughs> I like it. Dan's not here, so we got to say something funny about someone. Well, <laughs> let's close this one. Out. <laughs> All right, everybody, be sure to like and subscribe. Check out the socials, and we'll be sure to get Pratik's information in the show notes as well. Uh, do check out that class, applying, um, actually not applying, it's flow metrics for scrum teams. Want to make sure that uh, if these ideas are, are interesting, to, interesting to you, you check out that course. Uh, Todd, Dan Vicanti, and I will be teaching it uh, coming up in March. You don't want to miss it. Uh, but for Todd and Pratik, I'm Ryan. Check these ideas out. Uh, take a look at work item age. Uh, take a look at cycle time. See if you can start working on service level expectation. You can do that without uh, the class. Run some experiments. See if it works. And uh, we can't wait to see how it goes in the comments. Let us know.